Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. This time, we're going to be going over a technique that'll work well for more motion graphics type animations. Take a look at this. Alright, I saw this video a while back that was going over the Exposed Transform Helper, and it was pretty interesting, and I thought, hey, that would make a good tutorial. And here we are. So I'm going to bring you guys up to speed on what that video was about, then I'm going to expand on it, and give you a few pointers of my own. So here we are in 3D Studio Max version 2013, and um, has anybody installed version 2014 yet? I know they had that new Populate tool, which is alright. I don't really know what I'd use it for. It has that camera match feature too, which Cinema 4D has had for a while now, so... Speaking of which, I should actually sit down and try and learn that. Or really any other 3D program in general. <laughs> Not Maya though. <laughs> I did a project in Maya once. Right, let's go ahead and expand our viewport so we can see what we're doing. The first thing we're going to do is create a few objects for our scene. So let's go over to the Create tab, and under the Create tab we want to make sure we're in Geometry so we can build ourselves a box. So I'm just going to drag out a box, or a cube rather, because I want all these sides to be even. 20 by 20 by 20. Then from there we're going to move over to the helper section, which looks kind of like a tape measure or something like that. I don't know. But we do want a dummy from within here. So I'm just going to select dummy and drag this out over to the side here. Now the most important thing is the expose TM or expose transform helper. So we'll select that and just place it in our scene by clicking. And it just looks like a uh, green cross or something like that. And these will be the three things we need to get started here. So let's select just the Expose Transform Helper and center it in our scene. Then I'm going to select our box and do the same thing by just right clicking these arrows down here, resetting them back to zero. That way our box is sitting right on top of our Expose Transform Helper. Next, let's take a look at the settings of our Exposed Transform Helper. So I'll select that and move over to the Modify tab. And I'm just going to drag this out like that so we can see all the settings. And as you can see, it's got different uh, things you can do with the way it looks on screen. We'll just leave those alone for now. What we're really interested in is the first section right over here called Objects. And what we're going to do is tell our helper to look at the relationship between the different objects in our scene. So we will select Expose Node and pick our box. And you see it updates to Box 001. Then I'm going to uncheck the parent under Local Reference Node so I can select our dummy. And what we just did is we told the Expose Transform Helper to look at the information that's generated between these two objects. So if we were to scroll down here and take a look, you can see it's got information like local position and the distance between these two objects. So if I were to select our dummy here and create a few keyframes, moving it closer to the box and then farther away, If we go back into the Exposed Transform Helper now with those keyframes made, scroll down and take a look, you can see that it updates automatically the distance and the X position. So with our helper kind of holding that information for us now, it opens up a bunch of possibilities for us to use it with things like wire parameters, which is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to select our box and have the box's height be affected by how far the dummy object is in relation to it. So with our box selected, I'm going to right click on it, go down to wire parameters, and I want to select object, which is our box, and then height. And it's going to give us this dotted line here, which means it wants us to select what controls the height of the box. And that will be our exposed transform helper. So I'll select the exposed transform helper. And I'm going to tell it the Exposed Transform Helper's distance is what will affect the height. So, 
It's going to bring up the wire parameters dialog box and all that saying is yes, exposed transform helper's distance is in fact affecting the height of the box. So exposed transform helper affecting height of the box. Connect. And if we minimize that for a second, you can see it's already starting to do something. Quite a bit of something actually. So let's go ahead and move our dummy back and forth. And what happens is, as the distance between the dummy object and the helper increase, so does the height of our box. So that's pretty interesting. Let's take this a step further by selecting both our exposed transform helper and the box. Zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and duplicate our box 10 times. I'm going to make 10 copies. So, hit OK. Now if I move this dummy object around, you can see it affects the height of each box individually. So let's do one more thing here and select all the boxes and all the exposed transform helpers. And we'll drag it out this way. Copy again and 10 more. Should be good. Press OK. And if we move the helper around now, we start to get something that could uh, have the potential to look very cool. So right here is the base of the technique. Now, I want to take it a bit further and put a little spin on it. So just to recap, let's restart this process. I'm just going to select everything here in the scene and delete it. There's our grid. Go back to home. So we've essentially reset the scene. So now I want to show you guys a problem that I ran into when I was messing around with this on my own. So let's start over. Same steps as before. I want to go to the Create tab under Geometry create ourselves a box and uh, this time I actually want the box to be more of a flat panel so let's do 40 by 40 by 2 there we go that looks pretty good so it's just a flat box let's uh, move this to the center then head on over to the helpers section again create a dummy object just like before and of course the exposed transform helper so just drop that in our scene and I actually want to place that in the center as well. So with our exposed transform helper still selected, let's move over to the modify tab. And just like before for the exposed node, we're going to select our box and uncheck parent and our local reference node will be the dummy. So everything's the same so far except our box is flat like a pancake. Now here's where the problem happens. I want the distance of this dummy object to affect the Z position of our box, not scale and height like before. So seems pretty simple, right? Wrong. Let's take a look. With my box selected, I will right click on it, go to wire parameters, transform, position, Z position, and that will give us our dotted selection line again. Select our transform helper. Go down to the object section and distance, just like before. And yes, I want the exposed transform helper to affect the height of our box. Everything seems right. I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. And we get this warning that pops up. Basically, all this is telling us is that uh, you suck. So this is obviously not going to work at all. So what do we do? Well, this is very important. So first what we need to do is make sure you disconnect this function. And for some reason it made 5 million keyframes. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So we disconnected this wiring function. It'll only cause problems for us. So we'll go ahead, minimize that for now. And just now when that warning popped up, it not only crushed our hopes and dreams, it also disconnected our exposed node. So. With the exposed transform helper selected, we need to make sure we reselect our box as the exposed node. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to rewire this to anything. So now, how do we fix this problem? Well, the answer is simple. X forms. So with our box selected, make sure we're in our modify tab and drop down our modifier list. And it'll be at the very bottom. You probably won't be able to see it now. It's just called X form. See? And what the X form modifier will allow us to do is control the height with the X form gizmo rather than just controlling it through the box itself. So now that we've invited the X form to the party, let's rewire this and see what happens. So let's right click on the box, go to wire parameters again. This time we need to go to 
modify object, X form, gizmo, position, Z position. It's a long one. We almost fell off the edge of the tutorial. <laughs> so Z position will give us another selection line. So we're going to select our helper, object, distance. So our wire parameter dialog will come back up and yes, I want the exposed transform helper to affect the Z position of our X form. Connect. And what do you know? It worked. So as you can see, I'm affecting the height of our panel just by moving the dummy object closer and further away from it. And that's really all you need to know. The X form will solve all the problems you would have with the wire parameters not working. So I'll make more copies just like before. 10 and 10. And this right here is pretty much the technique that I used for the opening animation. And I actually think this is affecting the panel's height too much. So we can always go back, delete all the ones I just made, except for the original, and adjust the wire parameters again. And we'll just add a little expression here that says uh, distance times, let's say, point. Let's go with point two. Update that. And all that's saying here is the height of our panel won't be so harshly affected by the distance of our dummy object. So we can go ahead and duplicate this panel again. Say 10 more times. Whoops, make sure you grab both the exposed transform helper and your object. Otherwise this won't work. Press OK. Press OK. And there you go, that actually looks a little more like the opening animation did. All right, I hope this tutorial helped you guys out a bit. Don't forget that you can use this technique on all kinds of things, not just position and height, but stuff like rotation here as well. But there you have it. If you have any questions about this tutorial, don't bother asking me because there's a good chance I have no idea what I'm doing. So, thanks for watching. And if you want to check out more of my tutorials, I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Also, be on the lookout for new tutorials coming soon. I'm planning on doing an importing vectors into 3D Studio Max tutorial, and possibly a basic studio lighting setup for 3DS Max. But until then, keep on...